Well, now that we've run the thermal analysis, we'd like to find out what are the stresses and displacements that result just from the temperature loading alone. At high enough temperatures, we know that, that metals tend to expand, and those can introduce uh, significant stresses, especially depending on how the part happens to be restrained. So using SOLIDWORKS simulation, I'll show you in this demonstration how we can take the results of our thermal simulation and use those as temperature loads into a static analysis. To do so, we'll begin by creating a new study, and I will call this study Thermal Stress. It'll be a static study type, and I'll use the 2D simplification option. As in the previous video, we'd specify axisymmetric, the front plane, and the reference axis. In our static analysis, you can see that the material properties once again have mapped over for the structural problem, so we need the modulus of elasticity and Poisson's ratio. For the fixtures, let's simulate that the part is restrained from translating axially at the left end. It's free to move uh, to expand on the right end, and it's also free to expand radially. This is similar to the restraint situation we had in my previous set of videos on analyzing axisymmetric parts. Now, how do we bring the loads in for, uh, from the thermal problem? It's very easy. Because we already have a thermal analysis done, you can see that down here in the study tabs, we have our thermal results. All we need to do is tell the thermal stress study to bring in those results. This is done by right-clicking on the study name in the analysis manager tree and choosing properties. Now, on the flow thermal effects tab, we choose the radio button temperatures from thermal study. Here we see a drop-down list that lets us choose any thermal studies that exist for this part. We only have one thermal study, so that's the only one that shows in the drop-down list. With a reference temperature of 77 degrees, that will be the, t the temperature where it's considered that the part is at rest and there's no strain. So the imported temperature profile will be with respect to 77 degrees. What's happening behind the scenes is that at every node of the mesh, the temperature values that were calculated in the thermal analysis are brought in and applied as temperature loads to a static problem. All we have to do at this point is run the analysis. It will run very quickly. And now we're seeing the static stress results here shown uh, von Mises stress in megapascals. We can see the maximum stresses occur at the sharp points and at the location where the, uh, the model is restrained, obviously because it's restricted from moving or expanding in those directions. If we animate the plot, we can see how the part is trying to move. Intuitively, it's expanding out to the right and expanding radially. As for the values of the maximum stress, we're seeing the maximum values on the order of about 20 megapascals. The yield strength for this material is up just over 200 megapascals, so this would be a factor of safety of around 10. In this case, these temperatures are not contributing significantly at all to the stresses or the displacements of this part. However, what if we made a simple modification and restricted the motion so that the part cannot expand radially? To do this, we'll edit the definition of our roller slider restraint. In addition to specifying the left edge, we'll also specify these top two edges. This would simulate some kind of a collar that, is, uh, that this part is inserted into that would prevent it from expanding radially. To reanalyze, we simply need to hit the Run button. Simulation will remesh and reanalyze. Now we can see the maximum stresses. Because the part is not allowed to expand radially, the maximum stresses now develop down in this region and are on the order of 135 megapascals, which is now a factor of safety of less than 2. So just by changing those restraints, SOLIDWORKS recalculates the stresses, and we can see now uh, due to the, the uh, more restrictive um, restraint condition, higher stresses are going to develop just from the temperature loads alone. So that's a great example of how we can t take uh, using 2D simplification, running a thermal analysis, and then bringing those results in to run a static analysis. I hope this has been helpful.